my soul will sing, I bless your name. I'm grateful for all you've done. For you, my praise will never end. Deserves all my praise. My soul will sing, I bless your name. I'm grateful for all you've done. For you, my praise would never. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters of Mount Calvary Cross Ministry, and to all our cherished viewers and listeners, I bring you the word of God this morning, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister through me to your heart, to your mind, and impart your life this morning. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we thank you. We bless you. For the gift of life. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your people. Father, take complete control. Lord, take over and have your own way. In the name of Jesus Christ, have we prayed. Amen. Beloved, not quite long ago, we heard the story about the prodigal son. And all throughout the week, I have been meditating. I have been thinking about the preaching we heard last week about this son. The Bible says that he went to the father, took his share of the property, as recorded in Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 downwards. The Bible says he went far away from home and wasted all that he had received from the father. And when all was lost, he found himself taking care of pigs. The Bible says he wished that he would feed himself with the food that the animals ate. But then when he came to his senses, he said to himself, All my father's workers had enough to eat. Why am I here and about to starve to death? I will get up and go to my father and say, 
Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back home. Beloved, have you realized that this son is one of the wisest people in the Bible? Yes, he did not start well. He made a wrong decision when he went for what belonged to him after the father's death. His timing was wrong. His association was wrong. He made a wrong investment. And he found himself in the wrong place. But then he wised up. The Bible says in verse 17 that when he came to his senses, and this is where I want to start my message from. And this is the point that I came to to conclude that this boy is a wise person. What made him wise? Number one, he knew what was wrong with him. He knew what was wrong with him. And he took responsibility for the choices he had made. He did not blame the father. He did not blame the environment. He did not blame the friends. He did not blame anybody. He did not blame the witches and the witchcrafts in the family. Neither did he blame the government of the day. He took responsibility for his own action. So he knew what was wrong with him. That made him wise. Beloved, do you know what your problems are? Can you really define what is wrong with you? This guy stood back, examined his life, took stock over his life, and realized that this is my problem. My problem is that I have made the wrong choice. I have found myself in the wrong place. Because what I went for from my father was the wrong time. He not only knew what was wrong with him, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. Beloved, if you can now define your problem, the question is, what must you do now? The second point that made this boy wise was that he knew where to go. He says, I will arise and go to my father. Some can define their problems. They know what is wrong with them, but they don't know where to go. They don't know where to start from. But this boy knew where to go and where to start from. He says, I will go back to my father. I will not go to an occultist. I will not go to a spiritualist. I will not go to my friends. I will not go to the wrong place again. He will go to the correct place, to the right place. Do you have a problem? Are you challenged? Is your back against the wall? Your question is, where do you go from here? This boy wised up, as the Bible says in verse 17, he said, I will go back to my father. So beloved, if you have been thinking that this boy is a bad guy, a wasteful person, this morning I want to present him to you in a different light. That he is one of the wisest people we have ever come across in the Bible. He did not only knew where to go, the third point was he knew how to go about it. He said, this is how I'll present my message, this is how I'll present myself, this is how I'll present my story when I go back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and I have sinned against you. He made a mental rehearsal, a mental preparation of how he will present his case. It is good to prepare yourself before you have an opportunity. And this is where this guy displayed his wisdom. He prepared himself. He strategized how he was going to about to find solution to his problem. And he had the courage he had the humility to practice what he has rehearsed in his mind. He said, this is how I'm going about it. When I get home, I'm not going to blame my elder brother. 
I'm not going to blame the devil. I am going to my father, and this is how it will be like. I will appeal to him. I will humble myself. I will plead with him. Father, I have sinned against God, and I have sinned against you. This is how he knew best to solve his problem. What are you doing about your problem? How are you going about it? The fourth point I want to bring to your, to your attention this, this morning is that he knew when to rise up. And this is timing. Wise people know when to rise up. Wise people know when to take off. Wise people know how. They know when. They know what to do. And this guy stood up. And the Bible said, just when he had come to his senses, he rose up and went to the Father. He rose up and went home. He rose up and followed the exact plan he had rehearsed in his mind. And that was the beginning of his restoration. That was the beginning of his restoration. And this morning I present to you the word of God so that you also take stock over your life. Where do you find yourself now? What is the current situation prevailing in your life? Prevailing in your marriage? Prevailing in your home? Prevailing at the workplace? Can you define your problem? Do you know where to go? Do you know how to go about it? Do you know where to move? In the book of Acts chapter 22 verse 10 Acts chapter 22 verse 10 The Bible says that Paul Then Saul was on his way to Damascus And the Lord met him And spoke to him when he had also realized his condition, he prayed a simple prayer. Acts chapter 22, the 10th verse. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 22, verse 10. I asked, what shall I do, Lord? So this is what you must also do. Go to the Lord. Lord, this is where I find myself. What must I do? And the Lord said to him, And the Lord said to him, Get up, get up, and go into Damascus. So the Lord knows the way he will lead you. He knows the way you will go. And this morning he is coming to you, wherever you are. You must go to him. You must pray this prayer. Lord, what must I do to receive healing? What must I do to be restored? What must I do to have peace? What must I do, Lord? And he will show you what to do. And there you will be told everything that God has determined. The Lord showed him where to go. The Lord showed him what to do. The Lord showed him how to go about it. That is the key for you this morning. That was Paul's prayer. Lord, what must I do? Now I find myself in this situation. What must I do? The Lord will show you what to do. The Lord will show you where to go. The Lord will show you how to go about it. And when you allow the Holy Spirit, He will show you when to take that step. This is the word of God for you this morning. And the Bible says, when the prodigal son had followed through these processes that he laid up before him, the father embraced him, had a party for him. He was accepted back home. He was restored to his former position. Beloved, I want to conclude this message by giving you this word of God, that the Lord has a second chance for you. The Lord has a second chance for your business, second chance for your marriage, second chance to restore you back to your former glory and even beyond your wildest expectation if you will humble yourself and let the apostle Paul go before him in prayer what must I do Lord this Sunday morning the seventh day of the sixth month Lord this is where I find myself what must I do and the gracious God he will show you what to do he will lead you where to go he will show you how to go about it and at the end of the day, 
your joy will be restored. Your glory will be restored. Your peace will be restored. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, this morning we thank you. We bless you and we give the praise and we give the glory for your goodness and for your mercies. Guide us. Show us what to do. Direct our steps, how to go about it. And lead us to the place you have prepared for us. And give us the strength, give us the courage, give us the humility, the wisdom to go about it the way you will direct us. So that your plans and purposes for our lives will be established. In the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. And beloved, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you have heard the word of God this morning. The Lord is calling upon you. You might have wasted your life. You might have messed up and destroyed all the resources God has given you. But just like did prodigal son, if you wise up, if you come to your senses and come back to him, he will give you another chance. He will restore you. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you want to accept him as your Lord and your personal Savior, bow down your heads with me wherever you are, let us pray. Pray this short prayer after me with all your heart. Dear God, thank you for your life, for my life. Thank you for your mercies and for your goodness. I've heard your word. I find myself in sin and as a sinner, I confess that I have sinned against you and against humanity. Forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood and come into my heart as my Lord and as my Savior. I surrender my life to you. Direct me, guide me, and restore me unto yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. Beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the peace of God, which is above all human understanding, be with you and your household now and forevermore. Amen.